I'm Cherie Maris. I'm here with Dr. Corey Green from the Victorian Fisheries Authority and we're going to be talking all things Southern Calamari. Hard hitting question number one. Yep. Fried, crumbed, battered or a la natural? Got to go natural, bit of butter, bit of garlic, can't go wrong I reckon. Job done. Now, you've been studying Southern Calamari for a few years. Yep. Why calamari? They're such a fascinating species and they're growing in popularity as well. People are catching them for bait and food, so we need to learn a bit more about them to manage the sustainability of them. What aspects of the calamari are you researching? We're doing a bit of biology, but also where they're spawning uh, around the bay, as well as where they're moving. So the research is just on Port Phillip? That's right, because most people catch squid uh, in Port Phillip Bay compared to any other place in Victoria. So that's why the focus is there. So what are some of the different research methods that you use? We use recreational anglers actually, which are really, which was really great. You know, we had surveys conducted around each one of the boat ramps uh, around Port Phillip Bay, and they were able to give us some great insight on the size of the squid and the number of squid that they've caught over the year. And how did you track their movements? We use something uh, like this. Is this, were you tracking the giant squid? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. We had little tags for calamari that are this big. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. And so when they swim around, does this then bounce off of this? That's right. So this is in the water and this sends out a signal because they're little battery charged um, tags and it gives it a frequency. So we can read the frequency and know what tag it is and then it records the dates and the time and the tag number. Right. So then we get an idea of where they've moved throughout the bay over a period of time. In terms of the spawning, how did you research, you know, when they spawn, where they spawn? Yeah. Well, this all tied into it as well because we found out that particular squid over summer, if the tagging, we found them all staying in one place. Whereas over in winter, they tend to go up the northern part of Port Phillip Bay. So okay. yeah, which is which is quite quite interesting in itself. So by knowing that they ge uh, they generalise in one area, we had a look and went diving there, and sure enough, there's lots of eggs, lots of eggs around. What the what they do is they they have their dance together, the males and the females, and that's where they change colour. Change colour and, and, and like, dance oh, I'm so around. Pretty, look at me. That's right, and all the males sort of hover over, trying to get a partner and things. So there's a bit of competition out there. Female will actually mate a number of times with different males. Okay, so when the squid hatch, it's like, who's your daddy? So when she's ready to spawn. Uh, she'll fertilise the eggs and then deposit them on the seabed and that can be in a particular seagrass or seaweed and it even can be in um, brown algae as well. Okay and it's a communal egg cluster so yeah. all the females will lay won't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do they lay just, is it just one spawning event per year or is no, there multiple spawning there's events? there's multiple. There's two main spawning events okay. sort of at the end of winter and uh, during the summer period but we know from their age estimates that they hatch all year round. So that means that they spawn all year round as well. So there's multiple spawning events during the year and that kind of makes sense because they only live for a year, don't they? That's right, exactly right. So with all of this information, so you kind of, you're getting an idea on size limits, you know, catches, um, where they're going, where they're spawning. How do you then package that up and use that to help manage the calamari fishery? Yeah, so we look at catch rates and everything over the time and we can see that they are sustainable at the moment and we really want to keep them that way. This sort of information that we're gathering will help us in the future to think what would happen if they naturally go down in numbers. So now we've got the tools with the biology and all this other information yep. to put in management strategies if needed. Yep. But no need to see that at the moment because they're a great fishery. They're, it's uh, really healthy. Which is why they're a really good food choice if you want to eat more sustainably. So how do they fit into the broader ecosystem? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Squid love to eat, okay? So anything that's smaller than, than them, like fish, crustaceans, all that sort of stuff. Even themselves, they will eat, so eat themselves. they're cannibalistic. Yeah, they're cannibalistic too. Whereas for the higher order species, like your uh, fish, larger fish like snapper and Port Phillip Bay, um, dolphins, seals, they're an important food source for them as well. So okay, very right. important. So it's, everything's connected, isn't everything's it? Everything's connected, yeah. So if I wanted to go and catch some calamari, yeah. 
Where are the hot spots? Where would hot you spots. recommend that I go? Everybody wants to know where the hot spots are. Yeah. <laughs> down southern part of Port Phillip Bay is really, really good, especially for big calamari. You yeah. know, they're down there to spawn as well. And you know, when they do spawn, we have all the little babies hatching out. And the babies are really cool, actually. They're not like a normal fish because they bypass a larval stage. They're okay. actually little adults. So they've got their little colour pigments and everything working and they'll start feeding straight away because they've only got a, little, a year yeah. to grow. They want to feed as much they as they can. They want to get in as much as they can. Yep. And so will they stay around the southern Port Phillip? Yeah, well, so this is what some of the research showed us was that the smaller squid start moving up in uh, to the northern parts of Port Phillip Bay. So it's nice and sheltered up there. There's lots of nutrients, lots of food. Low um, predation. Low predation, as well as not so much current is up there either. So they don't have to use up all their energy fighting against the current that we do have in Southern Port ah, Phillip. Which makes sense. So they can put all of their energy and effort into growing bigger. Bigger and for reproduction. So will they reproduce up there or will they all then come back here? Yeah, they still do reproduce up there, but we've just got our main reproductive site down here. So obviously you've learned so much about calamari. Yeah. What are the biggest challenges with researching this species? Yeah, that's another great question. Um, I guess because they were only one year old. Yeah. We can only learn so much in one year before they die. Unlike fish like snapper and whiting, which are also really popular species, we can do our surveys and forecast what the future is going to be. So we might have really small fish that we catch and then we can predict that in a particular year, you can, they've got, there's going to be lots of numbers. But for calamari, because they're only that year old, what happens this year could be completely different to what happens the next year. And the numbers really fluctuate from year to year, and we think that's really because of environmental conditions. So calamari, as you know, are fascinating animals. Yep. What do you think people would be surprised to learn about them? Uh, look. There's so many different things about them that are so cool. Their arms and their two tentacles that can shoot out and bring in the, their food. They bring it to their mouth and the mouth is like a little um, parrot beak. Just exactly like a parrot beak. So it, it's used to really... Um, kind of pull apart its prey. Cut up the prey yeah, yeah. really, really quickly. The other thing is that when they swallow their food, the food goes down to the esophagus, but the esophagus goes right through the middle of the brain. What an interesting design. Crazy, crazy. And is it true that they can change colour even though they're colour blind? Yeah, they can. They have a different receptors in their eye to look at different wavelengths. So yeah, they can pick up all the different sort of colours that they see and change accordingly. So they use that, the colour change, for communicating, for camouflage, and because they've got, their body's covered in these tiny little bags of coloured pigment that expand and contract. So it's kind of like a mood ring. Yeah, it is. So what? What does the future look like for the calamari fishery? Oh look, it's been sustainable for a very long time and we want to keep it that way and we envisage that it's just only going to get better really. It's looking really good. So the jig isn't up yet? Not by a long mile. Not for the calamari. <laughs>